How's it going everyone and welcome to the channel for another Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order video and in this video we are going to be discussing some tips and tricks that you will need in order to have the most fluent experience possible in Jedi Fallen Order. There are some tips in here that I actually wish that I had known when I first started. Now there isn't really going to be like anything spoilery in this video so I wouldn't worry about that. There is no story spoilers at all. Most of it in terms of story and features are actually well known amongst most people now, so keep that in mind. Now, if you guys are loving the Jedi Fallen Order videos, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Jedi Fallen Order so far. But getting into the tips and tricks, the first one I have in this video is that you can heal yourself whilst blocking. You should only really use your stim packs when you actually like really need them. Blocking and using is ideal and safe. Enemies can be pretty unpredictable at times, like when they'll attack and stuff like that, so make sure you have yourself protected. Healing whilst blocking can be a little bit flimsy, but you can stay protected and you may have to press the button to ask BD1 for a stim pack a few times. It doesn't work fluently, but once you get the hang of it, you can actually sort of figure it out and definitely exploit it. Now another tip that you absolutely need to follow with Jedi Fallen Order is always follow BD-1 if he jumps off of your shoulder. BD-1 is really useful. Sometimes he'll just randomly jump off of you and start scampering away or he'll run to something. Always follow him. He always goes to things that you can scan. Or he might go to something that you may have missed. So pay attention to your little buddy. He is a very, very useful tool. There were countless times where I wouldn't have known to scan something without following him when he runs off. So without fail, every single time BD-1 leaves you, make sure you follow him. And the next tip I have is visit every meditation spot that you see. The meditation spots around the world are absolutely everywhere. They do give off like a silvery white aura, so they are quite easy to spot from a distance. Don't ever go past them. Just at least rest. Upgrade your skill points if you have them available, or even just take a small break because the game can actually get very stressful, so it's a really good chance to relax and recoup. Dying can really suck in this game because it can actually send you quite far back, so make sure you take the element of risk out of it and actually just stop at meditation points. Now, like I said, these are scattered all over the worlds that you will be exploring, like Dathomir, etc., and there is a meditation spot on the Mantis right next to where you customize your lightsabers, so just bear that in mind as well. And the next tip I have is make sure that you unlock force and survival abilities early on in the game. I would not really stress about upgrading the lightsaber part of your skill tree straight away. Survival is perhaps the most important part because this game does have quite a learning curve. It does take a while to get used to the combat and you will need all of the health that you can get, especially if you're playing on a higher difficulty. So make sure that you play it safe here. Go for the survivability upgrades. And do make sure that you keep an eye on force upgrades as you go as well and try and find a really good balance. It really does help to be able to hold enemies in like the slowdown animation for longer. So upgrading your force is very, very good. It makes the window in which you can actually heal a lot longer. So again, that's a very, very positive thing to have. And once you get a grip of the combat and the ins and outs of it, then go for the lightsaber ability upgrades and you'll find them easy to use by that time. So again, make sure you prioritize survival ability upgrades on the skill tree early on. And the next tip I have is know which lightsaber to use. So in this game, you can get the double bladed lightsaber or you, just your normal everyday lightsaber. If you're fighting a handful of enemies, use the single saber. The single saber tends to deal a lot more damage, but when you have a lot of enemies like a crowd or just an overwhelming amount of enemies, go for the double lightsaber because you can really spread out your damage a lot more. Now this does actually segue me onto the next tip I have for the video, and that is go to Dathomir early on in the game for the double lightsaber. Now I personally did not do this, and I regret it. The double edge lightsaber is great for fighting crowds, and the game can get pretty overwhelming at times with enemies, particularly on Dathomir, so it's crucial to have the double edge lightsaber. You don't want to wait too long to get it like I did, you'd only be doing yourself a disservice, so make sure that you get to Dathomir as quickly as you can. Just be ready for a fight because Dathomir is not easy. 
It is pretty dangerous there and it can be a bit of a challenge, but it is a good one. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, well, where do I find the double-edged lightsaber? Basically, there is a workbench in this area of the map that's on in the background right now. Simply go to it and you can get it crafted and you can still opt to switch between the single and the double-bladed lightsaber on the go. It really does pay to have the option to use both early on in the game. It's just gonna make things for you a lot easier. And the next tip for this video is hunt sense echoes for experience. These things are actually really crucial for leveling up XP and getting ability upgrades. Now these things are absolutely everywhere and because they are, you might be inclined to just skip one here or there. And some of them actually can be quite easy to miss because some of them are up quite high, some of them are down quite low and you could just genuinely miss them. But if one does look a little bit hard to get or a little bit out of your reach, just at least try and get it because it's definitely worth the experience that you get from it. Plus they are actually pretty interesting and you can unveil some pretty cool secrets and hear some really cool memories and you know force echoes and they're actually quite interesting. So in reality, it's a win-win situation for you if you at least look for these guys and if you see them, make sure you get them. Now, onto the next tip we have, do not spam attack moves. Jedi Fallen Order hates you for spamming your attacks. Now, this is actually quite a good thing, but it does take some getting used to. The game is actually really tactical and methodical with the lightsaber combat. So you can't just mindlessly just spam attacks and... Like I said, that's a good thing. So you really have to think about it. It's not just mindless hack and slash. You need to know your enemy. So when you are in combat, make sure you fill them out and see what their attack patterns are. Once you figure that out, then you can go for them. Just in the meantime, use your blocks to counter, then strike when the opportunity comes. The fights in this game can take a lot of time to get through and they don't need to be over in two seconds. So enjoy the fights. They're deep, they're fun and enjoy them. And another tip is to explore side routes before the main objectives. Now, I do this a lot and I do not regret it in the slightest. This way you can actually explore a lot more of the maps and you don't just quickly just race through the story. And this way you unlock a lot more customization for Cal, BD1, the Mantis and your lightsaber. Plus you get a lot more XP from doing echoes and scanning. And like I said, this really does slow down the game for you so you don't breeze through it too fast and it allows you to take in the game, absorb the experience and enjoy the world that you're exploring. I'm seeing a lot of people just, you know, race through the game and I honestly think that's playing the game completely wrong. So again, explore the side routes before the main objectives. And another tip I have is to return to planets frequently. Now keep this in mind when you are exploring different planets. You probably will not be able to access everything on the planet the first time you're there. So make sure that you are returning to planets and finish exploring. You'll unlock a bunch of cool stuff, you'll see a lot more of the world and you'll actually realize just how much of the world you didn't see the first time. And another tip and a very important one at that is scan everything for XP. I mean it, scan absolutely everything you see. Every time the prompt comes up, make sure you scan it. Every time you kill an enemy for the first time, make sure you scan them. Now keep in mind new enemies that you face, troopers like all the variants, all alien species, plant life, engravings on walls, BD1 should lead you to them, but otherwise you'll see a prompt to scan. Always do this, it is a really cheap and easy way to gain experience and it actually tells you how you can defeat them with like a little tactical guide. So that is a massive plus in taking down enemies in the future, so it's good to have that in mind. But just bear in mind that just because you think you've killed something doesn't mean you can't scan it again because sometimes after I've already killed something, it actually lets me scan it again. So it's basically free XP. So always check after you've killed an enemy, just walk around them and see if the prompt comes up to scan. And the second to last tip I have for this video is if you get stuck, talk to BD1. The puzzles in this game can actually be quite tricky and you can get very lost. So always remember that you have your buddy with you and he knows what he's talking about. Talk to him and Cal will prompt a hint toward a puzzle or an objective. You're not alone in this game. You do have a companion, so you don't need to go to Google to get your answers. Enjoy the challenge of the puzzle, but remember that BD is there for you and he can give you a hint. And the final and probably the most important tip of this video is don't stress if you can't reach something. 
It's not always obvious that you can't get to somewhere. Like, don't sweat it, you can come back later. The first time I went to Zepho, I thought I had explored pretty much all of it. But there were areas there that I couldn't reach. I returned a few hours later and had hours of exploring to do through the areas that I could now access with new abilities. So don't get frustrated if you can't access all areas of one planet in one go. Because I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 of the time, there's no way you can get there without a certain ability. Take it from me, you can end up wasting a lot of time doing this, just trying to get to places that you literally can't get to. Like I said, I speak from experience, so don't be like me. Don't stress if you can't reach something. So guys, those are all the tips and tricks that I have mustered up after about 15 hours of playtime. At the time of recording, I still haven't finished the game as I am taking my sweet damn time to enjoy and explore the worlds Fallen Order has to offer. I suggest you guys do the same instead of rushing through the main story. Really savour it because this is a fantastic game and it's got a lot to explore and a lot to do. But guys, if you did go on to find any of these tips useful as a new player, then be sure to smash a like on this video and remember to comment below what you think of the game so far. And if you are new around here, then feel free to subscribe to the channel for more Jedi Fallen Order and Battlefront 2 videos. So until next time, thank you all for watching. I hope you all took something out of this video, but I will see you guys in the next one.